a memo to the chairman of the oversight subcommittee from the director of Project Freelancer. Dear Chairman, I write today in response to your committee's request for more information about our program and the suspected incident at Outpost 17B. No doubt by now, you have reviewed the video logs transmitted by our recovery agents dispatched to the region. I'm sure you have seen the empty bases, the barricades constructed by the survivors, the cryptic warning left on the wall, the battles that apparently took place between team members that had turned on one another. And of course, the ship. While we cannot say for certain, I share your concern we have an unfortunate post-project scenario taking place. However, I take exception to your assertion that we were warned this was a possibility. I would like to remind the subcommittee members that anything is possible. Some things are probable. This is what is. And my agency, as it always has, will continue to deal with what is. Until it is no more. To the director of Project Freelancer from the Oversight Subcommittee Chairman. Dear Director, I want to thank you in advance for your openness in response to our subcommittee's request for more information. We were disappointed that your recovery force reported a total loss at Outpost 17B. We had hoped there would be at least one soldier left that could shed some light on the situation. I know that your agency has enjoyed a high degree of freedom with very little scrutiny in the past few years. It is not our intention to disrupt such a progressive military program, but instead to find a way we can work together in a manner that befits all our responsibilities. I am certain that you will agree, and we look forward to making this review process as painless as we possibly can. A response from the director of Project Freelancer. Dear Chairman, while I am obligated to assist your investigation, I ask that you not waste my time with irrelevant questions. My agency is normally unconcerned with such minute directives as troop reassignment, except, of course, in the most critical of matters. Dear Director, Due to your busy schedule, we have begun interviewing members of your staff. I'm certain you will let us know if this bothers you. Our debriefings keep coming back to a single subject at Outpost 17B. Can you explain to us what this matter is and what your plans are to deal with it? Oh no! Hell no! Dear Chairman, Rest assured, we have the situation under control. While the Meta is proving to be an elusive enemy, our recovery agent is already closing in on it. I expect this incident will reach a conclusion soon, and I will be able to return to my research, hopefully without further interruption. Dear Director, we can all understand that a shift from autonomy to oversight can be a difficult adjustment for anyone, but especially someone of your standing. In that spirit, we have attempted to accommodate your brief explanations to our serious inquiries. Nonetheless, I feel compelled to inform you that even our trust has its limits. Dear Chairman, the Meta is nothing more than an entity seeking to increase its power in these confusing days after the war. 
From my perspective, that seems to be a very common occurrence at the moment. Dear Director, Your program was granted the use of a single artificial intelligence unit for implantation experiments. Yet, the department records clearly show multiple agents in the field with implants during the same time frames. Surely this must be a logging error, and we anticipate a corrected document soon. Dear Chairman, I understand your concern that increased activity would bring increased risk. However, our fail-safes are simple but foolproof. A dead or dying agent's beacon automatically notifies our recovery team and we will be on the scene immediately to secure all the military's property. Dear Director, I feel you are avoiding the question. If this target was already in possession of an AI unit, how was he able to secure an additional unit from Agent South? Would not that verify, as we indicated earlier, that your program now runs experiments with more than one artificial intelligence? If so, where did these additional AI come from? And more importantly, how did your agency procure them? Dear Chairman, our records in this matter are impeccable, and I will refer you to them. It is true that we were granted the use of only one AI program, yet with special permission to conduct our experiments. That is all we were allowed to do, and that is all we have done. Of course, I am sure that you will agree that the core mission of any scientific endeavor is to find creative solutions to unexpected problems. Dear Director, do your creative solutions include the circumvention of the safety protocols that every member of the military must follow? If they do not, then I fail to see how an enemy has managed to secure not one, but several of your experimental AIs. The protocol is not a guideline, dear Director. It is doctrine, and no one is above its rule. Dear Chairman, I too hold the protocol in the highest regard. The doctrine kept us all safe during the Great War. If you are insinuating, sir, that we violated it in any way, or that we were derelict in our duty to the military, well then I suggest you be direct and tell me exactly how we did so.